Hey guys, Patton here. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to play PS1 games on your classic system. I'm going to go over the various file types you're going to run into and how to put them on your system as well as how to play multi-disc games. Before I start, huge thanks to BS Lenol for taking the time to sit down with me and go over different strategies and ways to get these games on your system. Let's begin with putting the module onto your system to play these games. Make sure your system is hacked. I will leave my tutorial video in the description for you to take a look at on how to do that. Once you've hacked your system, go to the modules tab in HackGCE. Go to the HackG mod store. If you haven't installed the RetroArch module yet, go to the RetroArch tab. Install the newest one, which is 1.7.3b currently. Click this button right here. It'll say download module. That'll download it to your HackG program. Then go to RetroArch cores. You're gonna navigate to the PlayStation Core. It is PCSX Rearmed Neon. Once again, hit the download module button right here. It'll put that system on your HackG program. We're gonna close the mod store, go back to our modules tab, and then install extra modules. Put a check next to the RetroArch Neo mod if you haven't installed that already, and then again next to the PCSX Rearmed Neon module. Hit the OK button, a bar will appear. Once it's filled up all the way, it means that this module is installed to your system and it's ready to be used. Now the fun part, adding the games. These are disc games, which means you cannot have them compressed. Make sure this box is not checked. Make sure in your settings tab, the compressed games when adding box. If that is checked, it will automatically compress them. You don't want that. Disc games cannot be compressed. I would install these BIOS files up here. You will need them to get a lot of the games to run better. They really improve the compatibility with the PS1 core. I will leave the video on how to install BIOS files in my description as well. So some formats you may see. You may have a game like Mortal Kombat Trilogy with multiple bin files in a Q file. You may have an ECM file. And then you may just have a bin in a Q file. Let's start with the ECM file. All an ECM file is is a type of compression. If you decompress it, you'll get your bin file. You can add that as normal. To decompress it, you need a program called unECM. All we're gonna do is drag this ECM file to the EXE and it will decompress it. Gonna look just like this, it's pretty quick. Now if you go back to the folder where your ECM file was, here is your bin file. You would simply drag this into your games window. It'll be added to the top of your list of games. So right here where it says slash bin slash bin, take out the second bin, and add PCSX and then you can Google your box art and continue from there. For games like Mortal Kombat Trilogy with multiple bin files, you will need a program called CD Mage. What this program does, it'll combine all those bins into one bin so it's easier to add. We're gonna open up our CD Mage program. We're gonna go to File, Open. We're gonna navigate to the folder where our bin files are. Right here, add the Q file. We'll see down here it's working. It might take a little bit depending on how many bin files you have. Once that's complete, go to File, Save As. It's going to give you a new Q file. Now you can save this over your old Q file, which I recommend. So you would just click your old Q file, then hit Save. It'll say the Q already exists. Yes, we want to replace it. Next, the Save Options screen. Make sure that it says Mode 2, 2352 on both of these options right here. These have to be the same or this will not work. Click the OK button. And you see down here, it's now saving all those bins and turn them into one bin file. And when we go back to our Mortal Kombat Trilogy folder, we have our new Q file and then one bin file. So how we add games with one bin and one Q is you're gonna drag the Q file over to your games menu. We're gonna change the command line from slash bin slash Q to slash bin slash PCSX. Once that's been changed, right click the game in the list show in windows explorer this folder right here is what actually creates for your games you need to take your bin file and drag it into that folder to make sure everything is working correctly right click the q file edit with notepad plus plus you have to make sure that the verbiage and the title right here matches exactly this game's title everything has to be exactly the same including the case if something is capital make it a capital if something's lowercase it has to be lowercase if this is done exactly the same way you shouldn't have any problems so for multi-disc games there are two methods you can use if you have up to three discs you can use the eboot method as long as the eboot turns out to be under two gigabytes if you have four or five discs like final fantasy 8 or 9 or mist 
you will have to use what's called the playlist method. For the playlist method, you have to have Notepad++ again. We're going to open it up, and we're using Final Fantasy VII as an example. Click on the Q, highlight the entire name, go to Copy. Back in Notepad++, we're going to Paste. However many disks there are, you're going to paste that many Q files in here. Final Fantasy VII has three disks, so that's what we need to paste in here. We're going to change the second and third lines, so this is what the end result should look like. Disk 1, 2, and 3. We're going to File, Save As. We're going to navigate back to our Final Fantasy VII folder. Make sure the Save As type is listed as All Types. And we're going to rename this. We're going to name it Final Fantasy VII.M3U, just like that. And then we're going to hit save. We're going to drag that over to Hackchi again and add that as a game. Once again, we're changing the command line to slash bin slash PCSX. Right click the game, show in Windows Explorer. Here is our Hackchi file. We're going to take all our other files over here, drag them over. So your final Hackchi folder should look like this. You have your playlist file and then your bin and queues for each disk. The other method for running multi-disc games is the eBoot method. You need a program called PSX to PSB version 1.4 base. We're going to open up the program. Q files aren't needed with this method. What you have to do after you open the program up, you're going to select all three bin files by hitting these three dots next to the file selected. So disk 1, scroll down to file 2, add disk 2, File 3, Add Disk 3. You have to select an Output PBP folder. This is where the file is going to be placed after you combine the three disks. So we're going to select our Final Fantasy 7 folder again and then hit OK. Then we're going to hit this Convert button. Not only will this program combine all three disks, it will also compress the disk and save you some space. I think it goes without saying when you're dealing with PS1 games for the most part, you have to have some kind of external storage, either a USB flash drive or the internal SD mod. There are a few games that will run on the NAND, like Crash Bandicoot 2, I think that's around 200 megabytes, but that'll be using up all your space without some kind of extra storage. And we're all done with Final Compression at 26%. Back into our Final Fantasy 7 folder again, we now have a new folder. In that folder we have our eBoot file. We're going to drag that over. Once again we're changing the command line to slash bin slash PCSX. Last step is to synchronize your PS1 games either to your SD mod using this button or if you're using a USB flash drive you're going to hit the export games button. So now we're going to head over to the NES Classic. I'm going to show you how to switch the discs for these multi-disc games. All right, so we're going to start up Final Fantasy VII. We're going to hit Start and Select to go into our Retrowork menu. So in the quick menu right here, if we go all the way to the bottom to Disk Control, this is where you can swap out your disks. Right now, you can see Disk Index is set to 1. If you Disk Cycle Tray Status, hit the A button once. Ejected Virtual Disk Tray. Go back up to Disk Index. Push left and right to select which disk you want. Go back down to Disk Cycle Tray Status, hit A again, and that will shut the Virtual Disk Tray. So if we back out, go back to Resume, let's see what happens. So currently we have Disk 2 inserted into the PS1. So what happens when you try and start a new game with Disk 2 inserted? You are greeted with a screen asking you to insert Disk 1. So once again, start and select to go back into the menu, down to Disk Control, cycle the tray status, go back to 1, cycle the tray status again, back out and resume and let's see what happens. Game starts up just fine. That's Eris, by the way, she sells flowers. For PS1 games I really recommend you get a different controller, either a Wii Classic controller or an 8-bit Doe controller. Right, so we are Cloud, what does this unconscious guy have a potion? Great, we're just gonna continue. Oh no, more soldiers and fighting time. Cloud takes these guys out, no problem. We're gonna go blow that up. Apparently the bad guys have attack cats on their team. But again, no problem for Cloud. So there you go, PS1 games run really good on the classic system. Once again, thank you so much to BS Lenol for helping me out. 
giving me some advice on these PS1 games. All the programs I talked about in the tutorial portion will be available to download in my description. Make sure you keep stopping by, I'm going to show you how to do a lot more stuff with your classic system. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you want to contact me outside of YouTube, feel free to use any of these social media platforms. Also, while you're here, why don't you check out some of the other videos that I put out, and if you feel like it, subscribe to the channel.